Hi everybody and welcome to this MBA in Marketing Management. as I said is all about strategy so before I continue perhaps it'll just be worth you pausing for a minute stop the video and just think what do you already know about this area so on the area of policy and strategy why do you think business policy is important could you even maybe give it a definition okay so hopefully you've had a time to think about that and we can explore a little bit more about why it is so important so business policy and strategic management um, have been discussed by various researchers and um, there's a nice definition here that says that actually without a business policy and a strategy an organization has no direction so it's a bit like an organization that's literally just going around in circles with no place to go um, business policy here is defined as the study of the function and responsibilities of senior management the crucial problems that affect success in the total enterprise and really importantly the decisions that shape the directions of the organization and its future so what are the problems with business policy in the sense of is it very easy to define a business policy what do you think so the area of policy in business is a little bit like those of policy in public affairs in that actually it's to do with choice of purposes and molding the organizational identity and character and um, doing that and continually defining what needs to be done mobilizing resources in order for those things to be achieved so to achieve organizational goals and doing that in the face of competition or adverse circumstances so a core concept of strategy is all about understanding the competitive moves and business approaches that managers employ to attract and please customers, compete successfully, grow the business, conduct operations and achieve targeted objectives. So you may have come across the word before strategy. Do you have any idea where it comes from, where its origins are from and what it actually means? So to give you a little bit more of an understanding of that, um, the military origins of strategy comes from the Greek word meaning generalship. Not quite sure how to pronounce that in Greek, but maybe it's strategia or strategia or something like that. So in military terms, strategy often refers to maneuvering troops into position before the enemy is actually engaged. So in this sense, strategy refers to the deployment of troops. And once the enemy has been engaged, attention then shifts to tactics. So here, the employment of troops is really central. So this kind of military origins of strategy are centuries old. And therefore, it kind of seems sensible to start there when we analyse and understand what we mean by strategy. And if we substitute resources for troops and the transfer of the concept of the business world then kind of begins to take shape and, and begins to make more sense. So we've seen what the um, military origins of the word strategy mean. Can you think of any problems with this definition? What do you think? And I think that may sort of come to mind. Is this an adequate definition to understand what strategy means? So according to uh, Little Hart, um, who wrote a book about strategy, he examines wars and battles from the time of the ancient Greeks through to World War II. 
And he concludes that the definition of strategy as the art of the employment of battles as a means to gain the object of war is actually not a very good definition and is actually quite flawed in the sense that strategy intrudes upon policy and makes battle the only means of achieving strategic ends. So a wiser definition of strategy could actually be the practical adaptation of the means placed at a general's disposal to the attainment of the object and in view. So the military strategy therefore would kind of be a means to political ends. And concluding his view of wars, policy, strategy and tactics, Little Hart arrives at this very short definition of strategy. And that is that strategy is the art of distributing and applying military means to fulfill the ends of policy. So, according to uh, George Steiner, who's a professor of management and one of the founders of the California Management Review, his book Strategic Planning is close to being a Bible on the subject. And Steiner points out in his notes that there is very little agreement as to the meaning of strategy in the business world. Some of the definitions in use to which Steiner pointed include the following. The strategy is that which top management does that is of great importance to the organisation. Strategy refers to basic directional decisions, that is to purposes and missions. Strategy consists of the important actions necessary to realise these directions. And strategy answers the question, what should the organisation be doing? And also, what are the ends we seek and how should we seek them? So how has business policy evolved? So if we look at strategy and defining the concept of strategic management, starting in 1965, Igor Ansoff said that the common thread among the organization's activities and product markets that defines the essential nature of business that the organization was or planned to be in future. So that's how he defined strategy and this idea of strategic management back in 1965. Then if we move forward to 1972, William uh, Gluck or Gluck um, defined it as a unified, comprehensive and integrated plan designed to ensure that the basic objectives of the um, enterprise are achieved. Then going through to 1980s to Henry Mintzberg, he made it a little bit more simple by saying that it's a pattern in a stream of decisions and actions. Then fast forwarding through to 1996, Michael E. Porter talked about developing and communicating the company's unique position, making trade-offs and forging fit among activities. So then continuing this evolution of business policy as a discipline, um, Harvard Business School um, back in sort of 1911, you uh, talked about having an integrated course in management aimed at providing general management capability. Um, strategic management by Hoffer was a casebook in policy and planning and that the business policy evolution has undergone four paradigm shifts and this transition is of overlapping nature. So the development of sub the subject of business policy has always followed the demands of real life business. Um, and in 1930 through to 1960 in environment change, new products, continuously changing market, the Ford Foundation report recommended by Gordon and Howe suggested a capstone course of business policy, which would give students an opportunity to pull together what they have learned in the separate business fields and utilize this knowledge in the anal analysis of complex business problems. And 1969, this course was made mandatory by the American Assembly of Collegiate Schools of Business, AA. CSB for short, and in 1990 the course has become an integral part of management education curriculum. So to give you a little bit of an understanding of how strategic management and business policy has evolved over the years. Um, there are actually four paradigms involved in this evolution of business policy. So paradigm one was ad hoc policy making. 
So 1900 through to 1930 was an era of mass production in which um, maximizing output, normally a single product, standardized and low cost products catering to unique sets of customers servicing limited geographical areas, informal control and coordination. So the strategic planning was centered on maximizing input. So that was paradigm one. Then if we move to paradigm two was a little bit more about integrated policy formation or formulation. So from 1930 to 1940, with changes in technology, there was more turbulence in the political environment, emergence of new industries and demand for novelty products, even at higher costs with product differentiation, market segmentation and increasingly competitive and changing markets. And these all made investment decisions increasingly difficult. This was an era of integrating all functional areas and framing policies to guide managerial actions. So then moving forward to paradigm three, which was the concept of strategy. So from 1940 to 1960, planned policy became irrelevant due to increasingly complex and accelerating changes. Firms had to anticipate environmental changes, and a strategy needed to be formed with critical look at a basic concept of business and its relationship to the existing environment then. And then moving to the last paradigm, paradigm four, all about strategic management was from sort of 1980 onwards. And the focus of strategic management was very much on the strategic process of business firms and responsibilities of general management. So everything outside the four walls is changing rapidly and this phenomenon is called um, discontinuity, as um, it was called by Peter Drucker. So past experiences are no longer a guarantee as science and techn technology is moving so much faster. The future is no more extension of the past or the present. So the world is substantially compressed and managing the external and internal environment becomes a really crucial function. What to produce, where to market, which new businesses to enter, which one to quit and how to get there internally stronger and resourceful are the new stakes at this stage. So strategic planning is required to be done to endow the enterprise with certain fundamental competencies and distinctive strengths, which could take care of eventualities resulting from unexpected environmental changes. So going back to strategic management as a core concept, strategy in a nutshell, or the core concept of strategic management or strategy, is that a company strategy is, as we said, competitive moves and business approaches that managers employ to attract and please customers, compete successfully, grow the business, conduct operations and achieve targeted objectives. So the definition by Gluek is very much on this idea that strategy is unified, comprehensive and an integrated plan that relates to the strategic advantages of the firm to the challenges of the environment and is designed to ensure that basic objectives of the enterprise are achieved through proper implementation. And another definition is that strategy is the organization's pattern of response to its environment over a period of time to achieve its goals, its objectives and its mission. So what types of actions are involved in strategy and what is the essence of strategy? So strategy includes the determination and evaluation of alternative paths to an esta already established mission and objectives of the enterprise and therefore then choosing the alternative to be adapted. So four important aspects of strategy are long term objectives, which emphasize the long term growth and development, and these give direction for implementing strategy. Something else which is very important, another really important aspect of strategy is competitive advantages. So understanding and scanning the external environment. So monitoring it and making sure, therefore, that strategy is made to have a firm uh, or is made to have the firm a continuous competitive advantage. Vector is a direction with force. So therefore, a series of actions are to be taken and they should have the same direction for the whole organisation. 
And another really important aspect is about synergy. So once these decisions are taken to accomplish the objectives in the same direction, there will be synergy. And synergy can happen due to competitive advantage and growth vector. And the objectives need to be measurable and could be, for example, return on investment, sales, growth rate. So what type of actions are involved in strategy? So three types of actions are involved in strategy. So we've got here the determination of long term goals and objectives, adoption of courses of action, allocating resources, and strategy, therefore, is this creation of unique and valued position involving a different set of activities. So the company that is strategically positioned performs different activities from rivals or performs similar activities in different ways. So you might want to think about organisations that you've come across where they have created their own strategy, which is unique and very different from perhaps one that they've used before. Um, and what do we know? So we know that the nature of strategy is a major course of action through which organization relates itself to its external environment, but it is a blend of internal and external factors. So face opportunities and threats provided by external factors and then internal factors are matched with them. The nature of strategy is to be understood in the sense that strategic actions are going to be different for different situations. So strategy is a combination of actions to solve a certain problem to achieve a desirable end. It may involve contradictory actions simultaneously or with a gap of time, like closing down some operations and expanding others at the same time. So strategy is always future oriented. New situations which have, not, which have not arisen in the past will require revised strategic actions. And strategy requires some systems and norms for its efficient adoption in any organisation. It provides the overall framework for guiding enterprise thinking and action. So what is the difference, therefore, between strategy and policies? So we spoke a little at the beginning about um, management policy, business policy and the challenges around that. How can we define the difference between what strategy is and what policies are? So you might just want to stop the video now for a few minutes and just pause to think about that. So when we look at strategies versus policies, we need to make sure that we distinguish the fact that strategy and policy are not synonymous. So policy is a guideline for decisions and actions to be taken by subordinates for the fulfillment of the set of objectives. Policies are commonly accepted as um, or accepted understanding of decision making and they are thought oriented and they have to be integrated that so that strategy is implemented successfully and effectively. So strategy and policies are both the means directed towards meeting the organisational objectives. Strategies are concerned with the direction in which human and physical resources are deployed to maximise the chances of achieving organisational objectives in the face of a very variable environment. So strategies are specific actions suggested to achieve objectives. Strategies, rather than policies which are thought oriented, strategies are action oriented and empowers um, and empowers um, the people concerned who are going to implement them. Strategies cannot be delegated downwards and strategy is a is rule for making decision and policy is contingent decision. So that's quite important to remember that there is a clear difference between what we mean regarding what strategies actually are concerned with and how strategies and policies are actually quite different and distinct areas. And here we can see an example of what happens with policy, standards, guidelines, processes and procedures that you have some kind of charter, which can be lifetime, for example, or it could be 10 years approved by the CEO. And that involves interpretation and it's mandatory. That then is then uh, filtered down into policy. So the policy could have a lifetime of five years, which would also be approved by the CEO and need to be mandatory. And then that policy is split up into two separate areas. So it's split up into standards, 
which can be perhaps for two to three year two to three years in duration duration and normally approved by the CIO and once again their interpretation is mandatory and it's also spill up into guidelines so these once again are around two to three years in duration duration approved by the CEO CIO sorry and their interpretation though for however is discretionary so this is showing how we can start with a charter we then need to then cascade down into a policy standards and guidelines which i suppose we could say in terms of purpose are the functional requirements so what characteristics will the solution have the policy is more related to the business requirements and the charter is more to do with the mandate so if we then filter right down to the bottom of the pyramid once we've got our standards and our guidelines these are then broken down into processes and procedures. So that could have a lifetime of anything from maybe half a year to three years. It's normally approved by middle management and its interpretation is mandatory. So we could call this, if you like, the recipe. So what steps do we take for this to take place and, and for this charter to happen? It started off from, from being mandatory um, over a you know, much longer period, which is the mandate and the volume is much less to then when we go filter down into standards and guidelines and processes and procedures we're talking about a lot here we're talking about the recipes and the steps that we need to take to make that charter happen so when we talk about strategy we need to understand too that strategy is different from tactics so strategy determines the major plans to be undertaken a goal of a strategy is to gain competitive advantage break the opponent Strategic decisions cannot be delegated downwards. Strategy formulation is dynamic, so it's constantly changing, responding to the environment, and it can be continuous or it can be irregular. Strategy has a long term perspective and has a high element of uncertainty because, of course, the best laid plans, we don't really know if they're actually going to take place because of what's going on in the external environment. And strategy formulation is affected by the personal values of the person involved in the process. So how does that differ to tactics then? So tactics is more the means by which previously determined plans are executed. The goal of tactics is to achieve success in a given direction. So tactical decisions can be delegated to all levels of the organisation. And tactics are determined on a periodic basis with some fixed timetable. Tactical decisions are more certain as they work upon the framework set by the strategy. Tactical decision implementation is impersonal and tactical decisions are less important than strategic decisions. So we've talked about the difference between strategy and policies. We've talked about now the difference between strategy and tactics. So have a think for a little bit. What do we mean, therefore, by strategic management? See if you can just think, OK, so how do we put this all together? So strategic management is defined as the process of analysing various opportunities and threats vis-a-vis -vis organisational strengths and weaknesses, formulating and arriving at strategic choices through critical evaluation of alternatives and implementing them to meet the set of objectives of the organization. So a more simple objective, or sorry, a more simple definition is that strategic management is concerned with making decisions about an organization's future direction and implementing those decisions. And what are the tasks then? So we know this is what strategic management is and what are the tasks of strategic management? Have a think about that for a second, maybe pause the video before we continue. So, there are five tasks of strategic management. The first task is all about forming or formulating a strategic vision of what the company's future business makeup will be and where the organization is headed. So a long-term vision to infuse the organization with a sense of purposeful action. Another really important task of strategic management is setting objectives. So converting strategic vision into specific measurable performance outcomes. Then another really important part of strategic management is crafting a strategy to achieve those desired outcomes. We then, of course, need to implement and execute it efficiently and effectively as possible. 
And once that's taken place at the end of the process, there needs to be some evaluation, looking at the performance and initiating corrective adjustment in vision, long term directions, objectives and strategy in light of actual experience. So changing conditions, new ideas and new opportunities. So who performs these five tasks of strategic management? Well, as we saw in the uh, pyramid earlier, the CEO is extremely important in this process. So he or she is actually the most important strategy manager who is also most visible. And he or she performs various roles such as chief direction setter, chief objective setter, chief strategy maker, chief strategy implementer. The vice presidents of various functions have roles to play in uh, strategy making and implementing too. So functional heads like production, marketing, finance, HR, etc. have responsibilities to deliver measurable performance as per strategic planning. And all make major organisational units, so business units, divisions, staff, plant, support groups, district offices, have leading and supporting roles in um, the company's strategic game plan. So those are the, the main players who are crucial in actually undertaking and, and being involved in the, in the tasks of, of, of creating a, a strategic management workforce. The CEO and senior corporate executives have responsibility and personal authority for major strategic decisions. The managers work with profit and loss responsibilities for individual business units or functions. Functional heads and departments and departmental heads have direct responsibility over major business areas. And managers of operating plants, um, for them, strategy making is a job for all the line managers. So doers should be strategy makers. It should not be left to staff of planners. Strategic planning is not a standalone function, it's an integrated team effort. So these are the people who are involved in strategic planning. What is involved in strategic planning? So aspects of strategic planning which are really important to be aware of are the fact that strategic planning provides the route map for the enterprise. So it, it lends a framework which can ensure that decisions concerning the future are taken in a systematic and purposeful way. So strategic planning provides a hedge against uncertainty and against totally unexpected developments. So strategic planning helps in understanding trends in a better way and generates a reference frame for investment decisions. It provides the framework for all major business decisions, decisions on businesses, products, markets, manufacturing, facilities, investments and organisational structure. It's a pathfinder for business opportunities and it is also a defence mechanism to avoid costly mistakes in the choice of product market or investments. The more intense the environmental uncertainty is, the more critical it is to have a strategic planning process. So the success of the efforts and activities of the enterprise depends heavily on the quality of strategic planning. Considerable thought and effort must go into the vision, the insight, the experience, the quality of judgment and the perfection of methods and measures. Strategic planning is a management task concerned with growth and future of the business enterprise. Another area to be aware of is that strategic planning utilises a little bit of intuition as well as logic. So the logic is through planning and in the information process and the intuition is through experience, knowledge and vision of the top people in, in management. So all vital aspects of corporate governments, governance are, perfect, are perfected through strategic planning starting from the corporate mission, philosophy and core values, down to the choice of businesses and strategies. So through analytical um, process or through that as the analytical process aspect involved in strategic planning, corporations understand where its core, their, their core competencies are. They're therefore able to identify their competitive advantages and then do a little bit of a gap analysis to point, pinpoint where are the gaps and formulate steps to bridge them. So 
when we're talking about strategic planning, it's really important to think about future, the growth, environment, um, a kind of a basket of businesses of the firm for additions and deletions, strategy and, um, and kind of not day to day routine matters, but the creation of core competencies and competitiveness and, and finally putting that all together and so integrating it all. So strategic planning views the organisation and business in its totality and not a particular function. Thus, strategic planning is corporate strategy. Strategic planning differs from other operative and administrative functions of management. Strategic planning provides objective strategy design. So it looks at growth objective to performance levels, profitability targets, it then looks at the product market scope and how it's going to penetrate the market. It looks at growth vector product market posture and development or diversification. It looks at its competitive advantages, um, creating synergy and strength obtained from new product market selections. So it um, yeah, is broken down into those uh, five areas. Um, and yeah, and differs from other operative and administrative functions of management. Um, Henry Mintzberg, who is an academic author and researcher, um, who's pictured here in this in this in this slide, um, wrote a book with Bruce Alstrand and Joseph Campbell called Strategy Bites Back. And in that he presented five P's as a way to define strategy. And each P shines a spotlight on what strategy is and means and encompasses it from a different angle to provide a really comprehensive overview that's probably more useful than definitions that try to fit it all into a couple of sentences. So Mintzberg's five P's of strategies are related to the fact that these five P's adjusted where necessary to fit into professional services or industrial firms are as follows. So strategy is a plan, so P for plan. To almost anyone you care to ask, strategy is a plan. It's got to have some sort of consciously intended course of action, some sort of guideline or set of guidelines to deal with a situation. A child has a strategy to get over a fence. A firm has one to dominate a market for a particular service or practice area. So by this definition, strategies have two essential characteristics. They are developed consciously and they're developed purposefully. Strategy is also a ploy. So really what we mean by that, it's a specific manoeuvre intended to outwit an opponent or competitor. So the kid may use the fence as a ploy to draw a bully into his yard where his Doberman pincher awaits um, intruders. So likewise, a firm may threaten to establish a new practice area in order to discourage a competitor from trying to do the same. So here the real strategy, as planned that is, the real intention, is the threat, not the new practice area itself and as such is a ploy. Threatened litigation often falls into this category. So the third P in Mintzberg's definition of strategy involves patterns. So strategy, whether as general plans or specific ploys, is pointless if it cannot be realised. So in other words, defining strategy as a plan or a ploy is not sufficient. We also need a definition that encompasses the resulting behaviour. Thus strategy is also a pattern. And it's a pattern in a stream of actions. So by this definition, strategy is consistent in behaviour, whether or not intended. So the outcome of strategy does not derive from the design or plan, but from the action that is taken as a result. The strategy is also about position. So specifically as a means of locating a firm and its environment. So in ecological terms, strategy becomes that firm's niche. In management terms, a domain consisting of a particular combination of services, clients and markets. So position is often defined competitively, literally so in the military where it becomes the site of a battle. And then the last part of strategy, according to Mintzberg's five P's, is that strategy is a perspective. So while position is outwardly focused, 
perspective looks inward into the firm, even into the heads of the actual strategists themselves. So strategy in terms of this definition becomes an ingrained way of perceiving the world. Some firms are aggressive pace setters, others build protective shells around themselves. Almost every profession has about it its unique perspectives that indelibly flavour the strategies that firms practising those professions craft for themselves. So a law firm's view of their business is fundamentally different to that of an accounting firm and an engineering firm or a graphic design studio, yet all are staffed by professionals. So to put that in, in um, well, just kind of put that in a simple terms and, and, and then integrate the, the five P's together, the plan then provides the roadmap by which the firm intends to achieve its goals. Ploys add a dimension of manoeuvre where one firm's gain is another's loss and competitive advantage is crucial. Patterns emphasise that strategy is not a once off event, but a constant stream of decisions and resultant actions that drive the firm forward over time towards its goals. Position adds that different firms have different mixes of markets, clients and services that they provide to those clients. And finally, perspective provides an insight into how the firm and its strategists are informed by their own profession, their perceptions of business and the unique characteristics of each firm's own world. So strategy. It's a simple and undeniably relevant matter for managers to periodically ask themselves some questions of the employees reporting to them. So questions such as what have you done to improve customer service? What have you done to improve customer satisfaction? What have you done to reduce costs? What have you done to increase productivity? And what have you done to increase revenues from new products and services? So these are some fundamental questions. And regardless of the definition of strategy or the many factors affecting the choice of corporate or competitive strategy, there are some fundamental questions to be asked and answered. And then these also include the following.